So this chapter is called How to Use It, and I added an accountability, all right? So these are direct quotes. Dr. Holmes says this. One of the greatest difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice, yeah. right? Yeah, we all talk about it. Someone asks you a question like, oh, yeah, I heard that on Sunday, or I heard that in a class, or I read that in a book, and I have this wisdom and this knowledge, but your life doesn't reflect it. They look at you and they go like this, yeah, really? <laughs> you, under you do understand it, right? I mean, you can say the words, but... Are you living them? Are you applying them? As a matter of fact, we only know as much as we can prove and actually demonstrate. Show me the... It's funny how you all come right to that place, right? <laughs> Jerry Maguire really had an impact, right? <laughs> Show me the money. No, but you know what? I want to say this. Show me your health. Show me your relationships. Sure, show me your financial security, but show me your creativity. Show me your service to our community. Show me how you're demonstrating the, uh, the application, uh, how, wow, how you're applying the principles of the science of mind. It's not just about talking about it. It's like, show me, demonstrate it. You know, one of the things I, I look at in terms of uh, when I talked to Charles, in terms of when he was interviewing, I thought, you're a spiritual leader. I want to know about your health. I want to know about your relationships. I want to know about your financial security because you better know how to walk the walk and talk the talk and actually put the rubber on the road and make it happen because you're going to be looked at that way. And no, am I perfect? Hell no. Say hell no. Oh, thank you. I, I'm glad you agree that I'm not perfect and that I have room to improve in every area of my life. But I'm certainly applying the principles to the best of my ability. That's the key, all right? Now, there's a nuance to this. When we get to the last chapter, there's a little nuance. And I want to share that with you. It's the concept, two concepts. The first one is this. What if? The question, what if? What if I had healthier relationships? What if I had greater financial security? What if I had uh, better health? What if is a question that's going to open up the door to these things. Are you with me? All right, but then there's the brother question is this, why not? See, if I say what if, and you go like that, because I know we all do this. We use our imagination to go, well, what if this was going to happen? And then you travel down the road of what if, right? And then suddenly you go, well, why not? Why not? And then everyone you know gives you a reason why that's not going to work, <laughs> right? And you, and, and, and you start to buy into it. You're like, but I liked using my what if. But then when it came to the why not, I began to just diminish my idea because of what other people are thinking, or even because I have started creating my own doubts. So we're going to talk about that today. The first one is what if. What if is a great question. It's what can be. It starts opening up this imaginative and receptive process. So what if you had greater health? What if you had greater relationships? What if you had greater financial security? What would that look like? Can you imagine a life where you're living those qualities? where you're worrying a lot less in those areas. Do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely you do. Because it, all throughout our life, we spend time worrying about different parts of our life, don't we? And then as soon as one gets fixed, have you noticed that other ones kind of break down? <laughs> have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed that, that you kind of, you could ride the wave for a while, but then eventually you have to go back and pay attention to something you're not paying attention to, or pay attention to something you're not actively being in gratitude and appreciation around. Because what you miss when you don't give thanks for something, it begins to dwindle. When I don't think about my health and I give great thanks for my health, for some reason, something always comes up and challenges the fact that I have not been growing my health. Does that make sense? All right? So the question, the what if, starts opening up the imagination. In a world geared toward making all of us the same, we have to look at that. What if is a great question. How does that do that? How is the world moving us in that direction? This is what you can equate. Corporations talk about values. They, they create media, a social media campaign so that we, they tell us what we should be valuing. Does that make sense? In the same way, religions give us code of conduct, the Big Ten. The Big Ten Commandments, right? right? They tell us this is how you should be living your life. Then we have societies. We come up with, you know, laws and rules. This is what you should do. So what happens when you say, what if? What if dares us to uncover something different? 
And I mean, it really does dare us because we don't say, what if my life remains the same? Usually we don't say that because that's a boring statement. <laughs> then you already know what the outcome is. If my what if my life remains the same? Okay, where's my breakfast, right? No, it opens up the idea to dare something different to happen. I like it. Something unusual, something else, something not the same. What if? When is the last time you sat there and contemplated the game and used the imagination to create not a life that you think you can achieve with your current set of limitations, but a life beyond if you didn't have those? You see, we dream in a box. We dream in a box. We all put a box on, we've all put the lid in our good. Every one of us. It says, we, think about this. I'm in a box of my dreams. It has a lid on it because I've said, well, this is what I want to achieve. I didn't say, and then some, or and some more. It's like, no, this is what, okay, I'm going to give you the greatest example. I'm in a box that says, this is what I need to be happy. Okay? Does it say, this is what I want to be happy? Is the box have a lid that's going to open up? Hell no. It's not going to open up at all until I say to myself, I have to go beyond my needs and into my desires and into my dreams and think bigger than what I'm already thinking. Does that make sense? All right, next thing. What if is a question that demands volume, more ideas. The what if scenario around your health says, uh, what I'm doing right now is okay, but there's more to be done. So what if it requires us to be bigger? I think the universe is constantly asking us, Joe, what if you lived a bigger life? What if you did more in this area of your life or that area of your life? And I know that to be true because there's always this divine urge within me, that silent little nudging thing that always says there's more to my life than what currently exists. Has anyone felt that nudge? Yes. I feel that nudge regularly. It pushes me into a place where I know there's something bigger to happen. And now the question is, if I actually can start imagining it, and I can actually put myself in it, am I willing to get on the road and travel the journey to it? That's what this fourth chapter is all about. It talks about how this thing works. Many times I have big dreams. Anybody have big dreams? Yeah. I know people that have big dreams, huge dreams. In fact, they've had those dreams for decades. And they've told you about their decades of dreaming this certain thing. And I just like, that's nice, but what have you done? What have you done to make it happen? Have you been just sitting around dreaming about it? Or have you actually done something? In general, most people typically come up with one solution. It's the, it's the most expedient solution. And that's what happens. We have a dream. How can I get there the quickest way? What's the easiest way? I need to get there fast, and I need to, fury, fast and furious is my attitude, right? <laughs> yeah, I learned a bad lesson yesterday about fast and furious. You know, I was, I was going home, and I, let's just say I had a biological issue, and I was in a hurry. <laughs> There's a stop sign by my house, and instead of coming to a full stop, I sort of rolled through it going 15 miles an hour, but I just sort of rolled through it, right? And of course, the lights came on, and... You know, now I'm breaking out into a sweat because I'm like, oh my gosh, I was already in a hurry because of this. I know I got to sit down. <gasps> so I learned, sometimes we're required to come to a full stop. <laughs> and we pay the price when we don't. So ne not necessarily the fastest way isn't necessarily the best way. Sometimes life requires we come to a full stop, take a look and go, okay, I'm not in that big of a hurry to get there. But because we live in a world of Google now, we live in a world where we can just, you know, find three million results to a question we ask the air. <laughs> Siri, tell me what this is. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, we, can you, we live in a world where we yell, Siri, tell me this. <laughs> it's amazing. Some of us do. Some of you don't have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some of you are like, I have no idea who Siri is or why he's yelling into the air. There's this little thing called Siri, and if you talk to it, it tells you. Anyway, never mind. All right. So the most simple way is not always the best way. 
Yet being creative, asking what if means coming up with as many ideas as possible. So now I want you to bust out of the only one thing can do it, but there are multiple things to do it. Now this is where I want you, I caution you. This is where I want you to do your work. Don't rely on the work of others to give you these multiple ideas. Because usually people who give you multiple ideas are probably telling you why you can't do it. Does that make sense? Coming up with multiple ideas, even bad ideas. Some of, the wor some of my worst ideas, some of the best things have come from bad ideas. Had I not had that bad idea, I would have never ventured into the area of my consciousness that was open to solving that bad idea or resolving it or coming up with ideas around it. So when I had a bad idea, and usually I've implemented them, to some greater or lesser degree because that's why I'm having to analyze them. Anybody know that, that feeling? Yeah. You jump to it too fast, right? You signed on too early. Usually at that point, it's the birthplace place of great ideas. So just look as bad ideas come up, just say to yourself, but this is the birthplace of a better idea. Don't get hung up on feeling insic or insufficient or not valued or valuable or honored. But allow yourself to say, it's a bad idea, but this is the birthplace of a good one. Next thing, why not is the spiritual brother of what if? So let's talk to the brother, of, let's talk to the brother, what if? Let's move from why not to what if. Where the first question focuses on possibilities, why not challenges the limitations we perceive about the idea itself? Why not? Why not have this? Now, interestingly enough, as soon as someone says, I'll say to myself, well, I really want to do this. What if this did this? The conversation in my head, and it's loud. Multiple people are in there. <laughs> and by consensus, they come up with this response when I say, why not? Well, Joe, that's just impossible. What are you thinking? You can't do that now. Honey, that train has left the station a long time ago. And it starts developing this conversation of an insufficient mental capital or physical capital or emotional capital to spend on this new idea. So when I start saying, why not? Immediately, I have to tell that voice in my head. First thing, shut the hell up. <laughs> Just shut the hell, because it's hell that I'm, it's keeping me in a state of hell. Are you, t are you with me? Remember that talk, shut the hell up? Yeah. Love that talk. I'm going to put that one on the road. So <laughs> shut the hell up. I have to tell that voice, shut up. Stop listening to that voice because that's when my limitations start to pop up. Instead of why not and go down the, the, the idea, the, I'll call it the fantasy of living it out, immediately I begin to find reasons why not. And people are really good at pointing out reasons why not. Be careful who you share this stuff with. You may think you're sharing it with a friend that's really on your side till they tell you why not. And they have a whole list of things why they're telling you you shouldn't do something, and yet in your heart you want to change it. Next thing, limitations fall into two groups, real or perceptual, right? The real limitations might be logistical, an idea that can't be implemented for a variety of reasons, whether it's like, you cannot ski down Highway 111. Right? You just can't. You cannot snow ski down Highway 111. It's logistically impossible. That's a fact, right? So many times, many times in our life, we are given facts. We're given a medical diagnosis, or we're given uh, the demise of a relationship, or we're, given, or we're given a chance to go into a relationship, or we're given a chance to go in and have that health, right? We have those things, and they're, but they're perception issues first, right? They're, or excuse me, they're, they're real, they're facts. Facts are facts, but they're not truth. Follow me. Facts are facts, but they're not the truth of who you are. They're just the facts of who you are in this moment, but they're not the truth of who you are. Don't let these perception things, these, or these real limitations, become facts for you that now become your new truth. Because when they transition into you call them your truth, now you own them and whatever it is that you're looking to achieve in your life, you now have set the limitation forward. You've now pushed it into being. Does that make sense? All right, next thing. 
Perceptual issues are more common. They're imposed by groups or individuals and sometimes by ourselves. Most of it is perception. I share my journey with, with my life because just it's a great example to poke problem or, you know, you can poke fun at it, you know, I don't care. You know, like when I go to work out, I, I go to this thing and Laura and I go there and it'll beat the hell out of you, you know? And there are times when he says, okay, you have to do this for, you know, 10 reps of this. And I get to like seven and in my mind, I have this whole rationalization why not go to, why not to go to eight. I'm like, oh, I'm really tired. Or, oh. I, start, I start developing an argument not to complete the task. Before. Anybody know this one? Yes. It's not real. There's no real basis whatsoever. It is all a mental activity. I could get to 10, but as soon, the second, the second I engage in the process of talking myself out of it, my body weakens. It complies immediately. And then I feel justified for stopping. Because I'll say to myself, well, had I gone out, it would have hurt myself. <laughs> right? It's crazy how we do this. We take that perception thing, and then it becomes real, and then we call it our truth, and then we start acting that way. So now every time he says 10, I go, that means seven for me. <laughs> Are you with me? You laugh because you do it too. I love that. You, you short circuit it. Whether real or perceptual, in the end, it really doesn't matter what kind of issues they are. It's vital to acknowledge and understand these issues are problems raised by why not, because it's why the idea can't be put into action. So, what if, if we go into why not and we start talking ourselves out of it, we're going to do exactly that? And usually in the why not, comes the next, se the second question after why not is this question. What's the worst that could happen? Well, you just planted the seed for that. <laughs> Once you start that dialogue, now why not? Well, am I willing? <laughs> it's so funny. When we say that, when we say why not, and we travel down the road of what's the worst that could happen, we're spending more time on that than the what if possibility. So we have to dismantle that second part of the conversation. Why not? It asks questions about what's, what's getting in the way. At the same time, be careful of the answer. It might be negative. That won't work. That's, un, you know, or unconstructive, critical. That's a bad idea. So be careful when you do that, not to fall into the negative when you're doing the why not. I get excited about why not. I do the what if a lot. What if this happens? What if this happens? And I just, I, I roll with this imagination about the possibilities of a, of a different life in this different area of my life. And I got really excited about it. And then I asked myself, why not? And the answer is always looking at me straight in the mirror. It's not why not. It's, it's not why not with the universe. It's why not with Joe's dialogue with himself. And usually I enlist the help of others to solidify my why not. Misery loves company. Why do we do that? So usually it's the dialogue that I'm having. It doesn't have to be that way. The question challenges the status quo, so it's no surprise that why not is sometimes confrontational. My ego doesn't like the why not conversation. My subconscious doesn't like it because it wants to stay the way it is. Dripping. I'm dripping, I know. <laughs> I sweat when I swim. <laughs> Hang on. This is my weight loss program. <laughs> you know what? Charles is a sweater too, where is he? He sweats too. Wait, you got, you're never going to get rid of this. It's going to be drip. Up here is going to be dripping for years to come. But without going, without knowing the answer to why not, you go nowhere. So the why not is always a self-confession. It's confession to the self. I'm confessing to myself why I don't think it's going to work. And so now there comes a point when I'm having that confession to myself that I have to decide Am I really going to bust out of this mold and do it? Am I going to bust, bust out of the box and do more than just take a look? Or am I actually going to engage in a process of doing that? And so we come up to that place. That's the place where we are. So if, excuse me, why not guarantees that we will go nowhere if I look in the mirror and I decide, deal's done. If I decide I'm going for it, 
It will happen. You know why? Because the second, and you know this, the second you have made up your mind to do something, it, you, you, and I mean, you really make up your mind, you know this. You felt that before. You know what it means. I'm going to do this. And for some reason, you take the first step, and boom, everything starts to fall into place. But as long as you're on the fence and you're trying to talk yourself out of it, a.k.a. talking myself in and out of it, that's what's going to happen. Get to the place where we're moving. How this works, the un how this thing works, this chapter, four chapter, is it's working and has worked with great precision in every area of your life in this moment is a total reflection of all of those things. With 100% precision. The universe didn't make a mistake. Does that make sense? All right, another way of looking at two questions. What if uncovers the future? Why not uncovers what's going on right now? So what if is gonna open it up, and why not is that moment, that second that you're going to make the decision whether you're gonna support it or you're gonna start dismantling the dream. Are you with me? All right, limitation has no law to support it. Say that, please. Say it again. Limitation has no law to support it. So stop supporting it. Period. There's no spiritual law to support it. So I don't have to support my own limitations anymore. I can bring the, that, I can knock them out. But there's no law to support it. The only person that supports a limitation is me. No one else can even impose a limitation on me unless I accept it. There has to be acceptance on my part, concurrence, that this is going to be my limited factor in my life. No one can impose that except for you. And this is how that works. The truth is instantaneous in its demonstration, taking only such time in its unfoldment as inherent in the law of logical and sequential evolution. This is one of our biggest hangups. We don't want to wait anymore. My example still stands. We, we, we lack one thing with when it comes to the universe. Trust. We just don't trust. If I trusted, I wouldn't worry. Right? If I trusted the universe to just do its deal, but instead I worry and then I create the demonstrations to by worrying so it actually supports me by me making the wrong decision. Does that make sense? God, I hope so. <laughs> but it's that Amazon thing. We do. We trust Amazon, and it gets there overnight. <laughs> you can have it on your... I can order something, and it's like, the next day it's there. <laughs> God, why can't you be more like Amazon? <laughs> I'll even upgrade to Prime. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want, man. I'll sign up for the credit card. I don't care. Whatever it takes to get on the fast track to my demonstration, but what I have to realize, I have spent a lifetime making messes in my life. How do I think that Amazon or this universe is gonna solve it instantaneously? It's gonna take a while to like sift through the layers of my life because it takes a while to sift through the layers of my belief about my life. Are you following me? Yes. Page 60, the grand finale. In fact, I'm, I'm not even going to read it again. I could just do better with it. Look, how this thing works. There's a universal power working in and around and through you and has been your entire existence and actually before you even became this little idea in the mind of God that came into this spiritual or this skin suit, you were already there. This power wanted you to participate. This power pushes us all the time. Why? Because we feel aggravated or upset because we're not achieving something in our life, because we're longing for something greater. So there's always that spiritual urge to continue to grow and change. And the universe is saying, pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Don't discard that. Don't worry about how you're going to get there. Just make the decision to get there, and I will show you the way to get there. But you have to do your work, your work. You have to believe in it and believe in it and enough where you just don't have cast any doubt around it. In fact, when people cast doubt around it, you go, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. That's the only way. So you don't start to absorb their doubt. And having the doubt conversation with yourself will never put you in a place of demonstration. It will put you in a place of doubted demonstration. 
which is a diminished demonstration. You've used it, you, I love that. It's the wrong use of the right law. How many of us have wrongly used the law of right to create that which we don't want? We all have. Three people should raise their hands, so they're willing to admit it. <laughs> but how much good can you have as much as you can embody? If you can't, even, if you can't even imagine it, if you can't even go to that place where you're playing the what-if game, then be good where you're at and don't complain about it. Bless it. But if you don't like where you're at, if there's, if there's something within you that desires a change, then by all means, step up to the mark, speak your word into law, and walk with, walk with the confidence of Amazon. <laughs> just walk with that. May take a little bit longer to deliver, but just walk with it. Know that it's on its way. You've been doing it your whole life, and you will continue, we all will. This is what we do. This is how we were created. Learning how to use this stuff will change the trajectory as long as you start paying attention to it. But no one can make you do it but you. The grand finale is this. You're just beginning again. Every day, every hour, every minute. You don't have to hold back. It's just the beginning of something new in this day. Learn how to work it, and I tell you what, you will feel relief in every area of your life. Will it be perfect? Probably not. Is it better? Absolutely. And that's the key, moving it into that place. Continuous movement and new expansion. That's the fourth chapter. So I your lesson, everybody. Thank you.